Good evening and welcome back to tonight's Riverdale Minion Parent Parsha series, Parshat Miketz, Chanukah Sameach, Chodesh Tov. Um, I hope this finds everybody well and that they're having a fun and meaningful and enjoyable Chanukah. It's starting to snow, so we're just having lots of um, potentially, at least on this side of the on this side of the universe, um, over here it's snowing. Um, and so there's a lot of buzz and excitement as we're heading into this um, next night of Chanukah. I was thinking about the fact that there is just so much to talk about in this week's Parsha, and so many things in this week's Parsha relate so much to things that I think are going on in all of our homes on a regular basis, whether it's relationships, whether it's conflict, um, whether it's um, problem solving. Um, and I felt like I had to pick one thing that really was speaking to me. Um, and so you guys are um, on along with the journey for uh, with me. Um, and there was something about um, the way in which um, Yosef engages and transforms himself in this week's Parsha. And it's all surrounded by the idea of dreams and the way in which he thinks about Paro's dreams, um, which is in such strong contrast um, to how he experienced and thought about his original set of dreams that he had um, just in last week's Parsha that I really um, felt like was very present and deserved attention. And it happened to be that when I was thinking about it and I was looking at the Mefarshim, um, I saw a book on the bookshelf um, and in there was a article by Rev Tamir Granot about Yosef Dreamer and Interpreter. And it really, um, I thought, had a beautiful idea that I wanted to share tonight and think about how it relates to our parenting in terms of ourselves, um, our spouses, um, and potentially um, our kids and the parenting that we engage in. And so there's the two aspects that I wanted to pick up on. One aspect that I wanted to pick up on is when Yosef is brought in to explain and give some type of interpretation for Paro's dreams. The first thing that he does, right, um, which has become quite famous, um, and we know that there's similarities between the story of Yosef and the story of Daniel in the way in which he always has um, Hashem on his lips. If you think this is my interpretation, if you think this has anything to do with me and any powers that I might have, it really does not. It's all from Hashem. It's all that which Hashem has given to me. Um, and it really made me think about the fact that as parents, um, even if we're going to come up with solutions, even if we're going to come up with problems and face different things, and we feel as though um, we're putting all of our wonderful kochot that we have to use in the most positive way, in the best way. Yosef was available to make this interpretation um, because he had these kochot, but these kochot came from Hashem, and Hashem allowed him to utilize them. I think it's such an important message for ourselves at this moment to pause, and also for our kids to know that on our lips always is because of Hashem, whether it's Baruch Hashem, whether it's um, because Hashem has allowed us to have this. It goes back and harkens to a topic that I had mentioned earlier about this idea of really bringing godliness into our homes and allowing it to become part of our parenting um, repertoire, something that we feel comfortable talking about in our homes um, and that the kids feel like they can ask us questions about. Um, and I think that like such an important piece and it reminded me of a very beautiful um, poignant story that um, when my oldest was small. She was in kindergarten um, and she had an amazing, all the teacher, her teachers happened to have been amazing, but she had a kindergarten teacher who herself was an extraordinarily spiritual person. And she was always saying, Baruch Hashem, um, please God. I felt like godliness was very much always like on her lips. And we were driving by um, um, a, a car dealership and there were balloons all over the car dealership. And she, my daughter, Layla, looks at us and is like, what's the such a big deal about a car dealership? You know, why do they need all these balloons? And we're like, well, you know, cars are important. They help us get from one point to another point. And she looks at my husband and she says, Abba, but Baruch Hashem, we have legs. We don't always need cars. Um, if only I could remind her that um, today um, as much that she should, we should always use our legs um, <laughs> when she says, cover ride. Um, but I think that it's such an important and peace to remind ourselves, right? This idea of really instilling a sense of Viladila Kinyana Shalom Paro. However, that notwithstanding, I think it also opens up the door to something else. What happens in this story of 
of what did Yosef understand? What was going on for Yosef? And why did Paro think, and in reality, that Yosef's interpretation was so special and so different? And so what Rev Gano points out in a long um, essay is that Yosef understood by virtue of how Paro changed some of the details of the story, that what Paro was anxious about was he on some level understood that what was being predicted was a famine. And that's reflective of the fact that he adds on details to the end of the story when he's retelling it in terms of the fact that when they get swallowed up and they don't look like they've been swallowed by anything indicating the days of famine, that Yosef recognizes um, that Paro is very anxious, that he's very nervous. And so Paro's viewpoint of his dreams are, this must be what is going to come, and I don't know if I will be able to handle it. And what Yosef actually does is the way in which he looks at, at this dream is really from a perspective of a Jewish perspective, which is just because we dream something, just because something is going to be the situation at hand, instead of looking at it as, a deterministic opportunity uh, reality. In other words, it is what it is. There's nothing I can do about it. We just need to accept it and move on. How can we look at this opportunity that's in front of us that seems quite daunting, that seems quite overwhelming? We don't know if we're going to be able to get through it, but how can we problem solve it? How can we think about it as an opportunity of a mission, as an opportunity of a leadership to be able to change the reality? And if we think about what changed so much about Yosef is that the way in which he looked at this dream as a mission, as an opportunity, which is what he ultimately tells Paro, right? His interpretation is not just, there's going to be X number of years of famine and X number of years of plenty, flip it around. Um, but he also tells him, and here's what I think we can do in order to not make this be a situation in which it is only doom and gloom. And Yosef then kind of gives Paro like a game plan about, here are the different things I think we could do to turn this around. And I think that is what is taken in by Paro. Paro takes in this idea, and it is a Jewish idea. When we think about the Nivuot, when we think about the ideas of prophecy, whether it's the prophecies of Chorban and destruction, the, Nevi'o, the Nevi'im are telling us, and Nevi'ot are telling us, here is something that could come to be, but you have an opportunity if you take it as a mission in a leadership to change it depending on how you handle the situation. Um, some potential table questions are what changed about Yosef from the beginning of the story to the end that allowed him to see a dream differently. When he goes back and we think about the dreams that he had initially, instead of thinking about it from the perspective, what is this dream trying to tell me that my brothers are bowing down to me? What is that about? what does it have to do with sheaves of wheat that are now playing themselves out again currently in this dream and come to come to become a reality because it's really about a prophecy of helping his family survive a famine but he didn't see that in that moment he just ran off and said aha this is what it's meant to be and perhaps that Rev Grano points out was the mistake of Yosef back then that he looked at the dream how power was initially looking at the dream as deterministic as fatalistic whether for good or for bad this is what is determined to to be instead of it what is my mission what is Hashem trying to tell me what is what is my opportunity here how can I problem solve this situation um, how do we view situations with our ability to have impact on them how can we still be proud of our hard work and acknowledge that all is from Hashem yes Yosef came up with a wonderful potential plan in place, but he always is point going back to this idea that everything is B'adei Shemayim. Everything is from Hashem. The opportunities we have, the kochel we have, they all stem from Hashem in a productive way, not necessarily in a hopeless way, like it is what it is and there's nothing I can do about it, but from a real perspective of, um, of mobilizing ourselves and activating ourselves to think about this from a leadership perspective and from a mission perspective. And I think about it from a parenting perspective as a in terms of problem solving. Um, sometimes we want to help our children look at certain situations that sometimes feel daunting. Um, and we have the opportunity sometimes when we're overwhelmed and it happens to all of us in our own lives and it happens to our children for sure. We're just like, it is what it is or something I can do about it. Whether it's um, a test they have coming up, whether it's something that they were planning to get done and they didn't don't feel like they have enough time. Okay, it is what it is. I just don't have enough time. I'm going to move on. And sometimes that is the answer. But sometimes it's not the answer. Sometimes the answer is, okay, I'm feeling overwhelmed. Let me take a deep breath and let me problem solve and figure out maybe I need to 
put this on a different day. Maybe I need to think about who I can ask to help me. Maybe I need to think about a way in which I can help myself um, and think about it in a different way. And I think the ability to problem solve, whether it's in a small um, thing like our daily schedules um, and challenges that we have, or whether it's on a much larger scale as we're coming up on a winter break that might look different for all of us from how it looked in prior years, um, to how can we problem solve? Um, and how can we make this as an opportunity for mission and leadership and things that we can take within us um, and grow from them and learn from them and really make it as a positive opportunity for us. I think that even negative things in our lives, I believe in this very firmly, every negative opportunity and thing that might happen to us that feels like a challenge is always an opportunity for growth if we're available, um, if we're available to it. Um, it kind of harkens me back to the Viktor Frankl mentality, right, in terms of the fact that even in the worst conditions, you always saw people walking through the barracks looking for opportunities of where they could give to somebody else. And I think that's what really problem solving about. Problem solving is about looking at the world with a little bit less limitations um, than we might otherwise, that there's more, that we can, we, can, we can conquer this and we can think about this. And Baruch Hashem, Hashem has given us so many skills that if we mobilize them um, and we use the people in our life to help us think about how to mobilize them that we have so much potential and I think that's such a strong lesson from Yosef as we watch Yosef evolve as a personality as a person who saw a situation he viewed it in such a deterministic fatalistic perspective and he really evolved in himself to not just become somebody who dreams but to become somebody who interprets to become a person of passivity things are happening to him to become a person of action and change and it is him who really mobilized the Jewish people to really move the entire family and save them from the family and to become an um, um and 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 I think it's not 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 in, not incidental not coincidental um, and rather quite pivotal that it's the the bones of Yosef that we take with us when we leave Mitzrayim that Yaakov is buried back in Eretz Israel but Yosef this person of this person of action um, who had to learn how to be a person of action is something that we have to take with us everywhere we go every Yitzhia we have every challenge we're going to have we take this Mida um, of problem solving of action and we combine it with the belief that Hashem has given us the koho to do that and we pass it on to our children in the way in which we model um, how we problem solve but also in the way in which we help scaffold problem solving situations for them. Um, fun Parsha crafts. Okay, it's starting to get a little tricky. Um, so here are different things that I've been thinking about. Um, I think you could take all your leftover Hanukkah gelt if you're, you or your children haven't eaten all them and stuff them in whatever little bags you have around the house. It could be a Ziploc, it could be um, a grocery bag, it could be any bag you have. Um, and you can take some Kiddush cups and stuff them in there um, and put them as like um, place settings. Um, and so the kids have to shuffle through there to get their Kiddush um, cup for um, the Shabbos table. You could do magic wands. That was a late addition I was thinking about in terms of like, how do I channel the heart to meme? I really wanted to think about like a way to incorporate dreaming. Um, maybe like you put somebody like a teddy bear on like a cupcake in like a bed and you put like maybe just like a sour stick over them as if it's like their blanket. Um, the, I like the idea of trying to use the cows in some ways, but not making it overly complicated. So you could just do white frosting and just do chocolate chips inside like you have over here. If you have fondant and you're a little bit more into that and creative, so you could um, get um, kind of do the image that's up there. You could also do rings. Um, you could do, if you have mold, sometimes you have people have silicone ice molds, but you can also just go to the, well, we're not going anywhere, but if you get, can get an order, um, or you still have, um, any just like ring pops for the ring that Paro gives to Yosef, because he shows him that he's capable of problem solving and of taking on responsibility. I loved the cow noses. They're a little bit ridiculous, but they're fun. They're easy. They're not hard. You could just take um, some chocolate. So if you have any white chocolate in your house and some pink dye, or you could even just take white chocolate and then actually dip the top of the marshmallow in some sprinkles. These are all great activities for tomorrow because please God, we're probably going to have a snow day. So really thinking about different opportunities um, to to get the kids involved, to think about ways in which they could help get ready for Shabbos and get rid, uh, get ready for Parsha activities. And with that, I wish you a Chanukah Sameach, a Chodesh Tov, a Shabbat Shalom, and I can't wait to hear about all the different things um, that you did in your home and for wonderful feedback. Thank you.